Welcome back to the ABL Review. This is the first episode for the North Division. We're in season 22 of the ABL. Uh, this is our draft review uh, episode. Um, it's always one of the longer episodes. I think always one of the more uh, more engaged with episodes. People people like this stuff. Um, so just some changes to the North from last season. Uh, we have um, promoted teams, the Maryland Mystics, formerly the Detroit Dragapults, and the Santa Fe Suicunes. We got Darren and Michael getting called up. Um, everyone else is able to hang on, or honestly, the Dal- in the Dallas Drills case, absolutely thrive here in the North. Um, yeah, I think we could probably just kind of hop into the draft. Um, so this is this is what our, our, our draft looks like. Obviously, a little bit bigger than, uh, than the South by two teams. We can pretty much squeeze everybody into the front. Oh, okay. I can squeeze everyone into the frame on my screen, but not how I have it framed on. Ah, it doesn't matter. Well, we'll just go through one at a time. Um, not a lot of big trends, at least, that I noticed uh, throughout the draft, just in terms of, like, I don't think there was, like, a run of water types or anything like that, um, like there have been in some years past. But we can hop in first um, with the team that had the first pick in the... In, in the league by winning the South last year. We got Darren and the Maryland Mystics. So first thing we're gonna do, gonna take a look at those speed tiers. Looking pretty solid top to bottom. Like what's the biggest the big, biggest gap he's had is between Weavile and Dragapult. If you watched the uh South, um it's not that big of a deal. Um oh something we should have done uh just some some work we should have done in the on the draft tab here. Let's look for rock types because I'm sure that's going to be a recurring thing, just like it was in the South. Uh, we're looking for offensive rock types. Colossal's not really offensive, so not super scary. Or it doesn't really qualify. Same thing with knuckle stack. Um, I'm seeing a cleavor. Cleavor is probably the biggest, scariest rock type attacker in the league. Um, because Macargo is not. I didn't even notice Macargo got taken again. Isn't that fun, though? Um, okay. So, that's just something we were going to have to do eventually. Uh, yeah, the biggest gap that I'm seeing here is up top. Oh, I guess between Sceptile and Iron Treads, but that's 14 points. That's, like, within, within normal limits, right? 11 here, uh, just 9 here gets smaller and smaller gaps, but that's to be expected. So, speed tier's looking real solid. Um, in terms of type weaknesses, we've got a little bit of a flying weakness, but nothing major. It's not like Krikatoon and Hitmonchan and Sceptile are going to come every week. So you're not going to be stacking too much on those. But like Iron Treads and Rotom are going to be coming most weeks, so that's not that bad. Rock types, you only got the two resists in Hitmonchan and Iron Treads. Um, but like we talked about, as long as you have good hazard control, that rock type weakness tends not to be too much of a problem. A little bit of a ghost type weakness, but ghost is really hard to cover unless you have a normal type, which uh, Darren uh, elected to not pick up. Normal types really, uh, they have to fill a pretty particular niche to warrant getting picked up, so I get that. Maybe the slightly more concerning one is fairy, because your two big, like, your two big top hitters are both weak to fairy. Um, like I said, Treads and Rotom Heat are going to be coming a lot, so that'll cover it. Muck is actually really great for this. This is, yeah, these weaknesses I don't think are super exploitable. Um, unless someone's able to get up hazards and take out, or get up rocks and take out the hazard clears pretty early on, um, I don't think this team's going to have too much trouble with handling hazards, so I think that's good. Uh, go ahead and take a look at the hazard control, mind you. He does have two Stealth Rock Setters, no Spikers, so we're not going to be stacking too much. He's got Sticky Webs and Toxic Spikes, two Spinners, and a Defogger. Perfect suite of Hazard Setters here. Obviously, a Spiker would be ideal as well, just to have that in your arsenal. Um, I think that's good. Uh, variety of... It, it, it also, look at... Okay, so this is... I didn't really notice this when I'm looking at it, but a lot of pivoting. We obviously saw a lot of switch initiative moves on uh, Falconer's team down in the south. This has a lot as well. We got two volt switchers, two U-turners, flip turn. Like these five I could see coming a lot of the time. Along with Weavile, which has Baton Pass, which you're never going to use, right? But it's an option. Uh, you're not going to use Baton Pass as a move on Weavile to pivot. That would be kind of crazy. I, eh, you know what? 
I could see him maybe doing it against like a Doug Trio, because it outspeeds Doug Trio. If Doug Trio comes in, tries to trap Weavile, then it can baton pass out, assuming it's not like a scarfed Doug Trio or something. Um, just, you know, trapping is in this league, so got to keep an eye out for it. Um, overall team synergy wise, let's look at this Fairy Steel Dragon. Um, you got Primarina Dragapult Iron Treads. Uh, none of them are particularly defensive. Um, like Primarina can take a hit, Iron Treads can take a hit. They're not like that's not their primary function. Iron Heads is mostly utility. Um, Primarina, I think. Again, I'm I'm gonna say this a million times because it's oh no, I dropped something. Um, Primarina is probably best used as a choice specs user. At least that's the way that I have seen it. Like that is most scary to me. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's you know it is the best way. Uh, but it probably is the best on this team because it is the primary special attacker unless you want to go with Dragapult or Rotom. Um, which just a little weaker, um, maybe a little less effective in that regard. Uh, defensively, a little light. Um, you're looking at Altaria and Rotom and like a bulky muck. Like the only thing you have reliable recovery on Sceptile might get Synthesis for all I know. And Altaria gets Roost. Nothing else gets reliable recovery. So obviously a much more offensive minded team. I think between what Pokemon Company was trying to do with some of the changes they made in the generation, as well as just the Pokemon that are available in the metagame, that's what the shift is. It's most teams aren't gonna have like five solid recovery mods. It's just, it's less effective than it was in years past. But I really see no problems with this team. Just a really solidly put together team by Darren, I think maybe the argument you could make is that the team's a little bit on the weak side. Like, it's got a lot of good physical attackers. Special attackers, a little bit lacking. Um, obviously, you only have five Pokemon going over the 100 mark, and most of them are just barely. Um, quite a few Pokemon at the 120 attack, except you could probably cross off Dragapult. It's just, it's not primarily used that way because it's best stab type is good like ghost is a great stab type as we talked about before but it's doesn't have any ghost moves since it can't terrestrialize unless it wants to use phantom force and that's not a great move um but i really think that's all to talk about with darren's team we could probably move on to the next uh next team now so next up we've got the orlando magikarp um orlando magikarp have kind of a interesting setup to their team so first of all let's dive into the uh the speed stats Regilecki obviously at 200 blows everything away. Big speed gap there, but that's fine. Like I said before, I think I'm only going to be paying attention to speed gaps from 120 to 70. And most teams have that covered by accident. It's pretty easy to find Pokemon in that range. Um, I think 120, you'd want to have something probably in that speed range. Um, 115 is okay. 110 is like the bare minimum. If you don't have anything at 110, your team's very slow. You need to have sticky web support. Um, so, like I said, a little bit of a speed gap from 80 to 60, but that tends not to matter because, like, 70 tends to be the cutoff of where most Pokemon are going to be running significant speed investment. Um, everything else is just going to be speed creeps. So, like the speed tiers there, let's take a look at the type weaknesses. Ice is tough because it's kind of volatile because you're just, it's so many things are weak to ice. And so you're, it's going to, you're, it's going to be really swingy because every time, at least in my experience, it's like, okay, I'm going to take a Pokemon that resists ice. Okay. Now I can afford to take a Pokemon that's weak to ice. Let me take a Pokemon that is really good offensively. Oh, it happens to be weak to ice. Let me take another ice resist. Um, that tends to be what ends up happening. Now, Oricorio, Great Tusk, Gudra, Arbeliva are the weaknesses. Resists are Inteleon, Incineroar, Registeel. Um, I don't love that spread. It doesn't tend to be a lot of good, like, Ice-type attackers in the League 2, I guess. So it's not too big of an issue. That's something I should probably also check, like I did with the Rocks. Let's take a real quick scan here. Uh, no ice types. Uh, Articuno is the only ice type. Uh, no ice types. Lapras is an ice type, but come on. Um, 
Okay, cryagonal. Yeah, okay, not too many ice types. So not too exploitable of a problem. So that's fine. Uh, fighting, it, misleading, because it doesn't count the zero. But um, he's honestly, he's he's actually pretty... Uh, no, he's, I remember, he's slightly fighting weak. He's, yeah, he's got the immunity, the resist, and then a lot of weaknesses. That could be exploited. There's, I'm not going to go count up the fighting types in the league, but there are just... Everyone's got a fighting type. There's so many good, like, mid to low tier fighting types. That could be a problem, especially if you lose a Screamtail early, or they're designed to deal with Screamtail, which can be done because Screamtail is kind of passive with those 65-65 offenses. Um... Ground is maybe a little bit bigger of a concern because now you're relying on these two flying types to come in that aren't super sturdy. And then Arbeliva is going to have to come to a lot of games, I guess, because like Incineroar and Registeel, you're going to bring a lot. Lycanroc is going to be probably your main physically offensive Pokemon. And then Regieleki is going to have to, is probably going to come to a decent amount of games too. Um, so the ground fighting could be a problem, but he also has like the ground fighting guy, right? And Great Tusk. So. At least that is off the board. That's something he's not going to have to face. Rock, going to kind of ignore that. We talked about it because he has decent hazard control, so not a problem. Fairy, um, Registeel being his only fairy is, is kind of crazy. Um, like, I just feel like you typically have more fairy resist. Now, he doesn't have any dragons you're going to really rely. Dragons and fighting types you're going to rely too heavily on. Or offense, I think. Like... I don't know. I don't know. That could be that could be an exploitable problem too. Maybe some things to watch out for. Um, I don't think they are, you know, these aren't deal breakers. These aren't crucial things, but it could could end up being a problem in some respects. Uh, something else to look at. He doesn't have a grounded poison type, so this team could be a little bit susceptible to toxic spikes, especially because his two spinners are touching the ground. So I definitely think there's some weaknesses in the. But like in terms of like the things that you want to check off on a team list, there's there's some some issues there in terms of just type coverage. But in terms of role users, he's got plenty of stealth rockers. I think that's great. I feel like sometimes somebody takes one or two stealth rockers and they're just like, oh yeah, that's good. And then it's like, oh King Gambit's one of my stealth rockers. I'm never putting stealth rocks on that. That means this Pokemon has to be my stealth rocker. And this setup here is both good and bad because he's always going to have some, someone he can bring stealth rocks on. But on the flip side, that's the only hazard that he has access to. So a little bit one-dimensional in that regard, but he has plenty of good hazard clearing. I could see him bringing any of these guys on any given week. Not a big problem. Also a good amount of switch initiative. Um, four U-turners is good, plus a volt switcher and a flip turner. And you're going to actually use like all of these Pokemon don't have a pro actually eh, doubled up there that one that one technically doesn't count so three uh u-turners a volt switcher and a flip turner um i think that's good probably actually going to u-turn more often because you can't get storm drained or water absorbed um somebody could take advantage with rattled if anybody has a pokemon with rattled in the league um yeah so four u-turners and a volt switcher Seems to be a pretty good amount, because also all those Pokemon actually do want to run those moves. Maybe not Articuno, maybe not Oracorio, but they'd be fine to be on there, right? Um, Baton Passer is actually really nice to have Baton Pass on Screamtail, because you're able to pass Wishes a little bit safer. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, maybe we could see a Quiver Dance Pass from Oracorio. Unlikely, but it could happen. Especially if... Uh, Especially if Kyle wants to be like, if he's really salty about the fact that we didn't end up changing the baton pass rules, that could be his, uh, I'm going to prove them all wrong Pokemon. Um, oh, I didn't look at this on the last one, but he's, I mean, he's got, uh, I was going to say he's got decent priority. He's got one Pokemon that's got really good priority because Cell Rock is not shown on here and does have access to it. You're going to see Fake Out probably once or twice. You're going to see Extreme Speed a handful of times. Oh, Cell Rock is here. What am I, who am I kidding? Jet, you're probably not going to see too often. Same thing with Shard on these two Pokemon. Uh, I don't know. You could pull out a Shard on, on Articuno. It wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. Even a Vacuum Wave is actually kind of an interesting... Could be an interesting tech. Um, a lot of light screeners and reflectors. Like, you got five legit dual screeners. That's pretty cool. Um, Taunt and Knockoff. Not really going to be too effective. Somebody brings a stall team. Although, as we talked about before... 
stall's not um, a super prevalent playstyle. Um, yeah, it, check boxes down here look pretty solid. Maybe a little bit light on hazard setters. A little bit worried about the fighting ground and maybe fairy weaknesses that are on this team. Just puts a lot of pressure on Pokemon like uh, Registeel. Um, I think it's just, it, which is tough because also like unless you want to invest heavily, Steel types are are you know kind of few and far between the lower tiers. Registeel is not a bad mon. Um, and like maybe with help from Arboliva, but they both share a fighting and fighting fight fighting and fire weakness. And there's not like a Pokemon you can just plug in that takes both those hits super well. Um, is Fairy Dragon Steel Core I actually really do like in Registeel, Gudra, and Screamtail. Um, is Fire, Water, Grass is not a defensive core, but it's still good to have with Incineroar, uh, Inteleon, and Arboliva. I like those guys all together. Um, and Great Tusk is just an all-around plug-and-play mon. One of the issues that I felt when I had took Lycanroc Dusk is I was always bringing it over my actual fighting type because Tough Claws boosted close combat just does so much damage even compared to other fighting types. Honestly, that's a good thing for Great Tusk. It frees it up to do other things. You don't have to use it as your fighting type because you can actually use Lycanroc Dusk as your fighting type and it's okay. Um, interested to see what he does with Regilecki. Regilecki is a super difficult mod to use. You always want to bring because of that 200 speed, but it's just so limited in what it can do. Um, I'm interested to see what ends up happening with that. Um, honestly, his stats look pretty good across the board. I think the only thing you could really knock him for is that his special attackers, Arboliva, Inteleon, and Gudra, are not every week mons. Like, I think Gudra will probably be an every week mon. Arboliva, I think just the, due to the necessity of the types on this team, is probably going to be an every week mon. Um, if someone can, if someone have the right, right matchup of a very defensive Pokemon, like shuts down Great Tusk, like, I mean, an Oracorio, a Galarian Oracorio, and not Galarian, uh, Ghost, that's what G is. Oh, geez, I'm stupid. Um, that's funny though. Uh, yeah, if, if, if you had the right Pokemon that can really shut down Great Tusk and Lycanroc, that's defensive enough, then you could probably cause a lot of big problems for this team. Uh, but I think that's all I have to say on this. We can move on to the Blackburn Pokemon Club. Um, Snover's PC. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff going on with that name. It's Blackburn Snover's Pokemon Club. I keep on, but Black like Blackburn PC, I really like. BPC sounds cool. But then you leave out the Snovers. You obviously want to have the Snovers. Um, I like the rebrand. I really do. Um, just gonna take some getting used to, especially after so many seasons of the London Dragonites. I'm not too off on the colors, though. I kind of like that. Uh, anyways, let's, let's focus up here, right? Okay. Um, speed tiers. Uh, so a little bit on the low side. Like I talked about before, 111 being as fast as Pokemon is maybe problematic, but we th I think there are some things that address that. Um, how many... Okay, kind of a big gap from 185. A little bit exploitable. Um, so, it could be something... Go, so, it could be a problem there. Especially, I think, because Zapdos doesn't want to run a lot of speed. Um, I think it's going to be easy to outpace this team. Uh, and the thing that's really going to, like, kind of change up people's, um, like considerations on what they're going to do speed wise is this guy right here overquill um overquill compared with pelipper means that we got a swift swimmer on the field it's definitely a concern for some people um it's going to mean like i'm just going to just outpace tornadus eye but to catch overquill is going to be basically impossible um actually let's do a you know what i'm curious so let's pull up a quick uh damage calc and take a look at speed for um, Overquill, right? Overquill, Rain Sweeper, Adamant, in the rain. It's 538 if he's Adamant. Jeez, what's, uh, what's Reggie? What's Reggie Alecki when they're fast? Uh, five, 
Oh, hold on. We still got rain up. Now put up the rain again. So, Reggie Lakey actually has to go timid to catch Adam and Overquill in the rain. Um, so you're outspeeding most things in the league. Pretty much nothing's going to be able to catch you. I mean, what's the... Like a, there's a Jolteon, right? Like, does a plus one... Does a Scarf Jolteon do it? Yeah, Scarf... Or... Yeah, I don't like you. Yeah, Scarf Jolteon does it. But how, how low can we go of Scarfers where you can no longer catch an Adamant guy? Um, okay. So, I mean... Yeah, so like the 110... A lot of guess and check going on here. So 114, I cannot, uh, 115 realistically. I can't think of Pokemon at 114, but there's quite a, there's a couple 115s hanging out there. So Scarfed 115s have to run Timid Scarf to be able to outspeed an Adamant Overquill in the rain. Uh, that's not even to say if he just goes Jolly and then passes all that shit away, right? So Overquill is definitely going to be a big uh, monkey wrench in terms of uh, speed calcs. Could force some... I mean, I would say most 115 Scarfers are niche if you're going to be running that. And the fact that you also have to run Timid if you do that, it creates a problem for, for people. Um, so, like I said, a little bit on the low end speed-wise, um, but I do think that there is enough uh, you know, variation in there with the Swift Swim and honestly, pretty good scarf options down below that I think you it's really going to shake some things up. And also, it's got a lot of things that are going to paralyze. Meowstic um, has Prankster, Thunder Wave. Zapdos is just going to be spreading paralysis by the nature of it being around. Um, this I do think this team being a little bit on the slow side isn't as big of a detriment as it might seem at first glance. Uh, since we're talking about like average speed stats and stuff, like 60, 76 is a little bit low. Let's take a look at these stats. Um, he's got three Pokemon at 125 special attack. That is awesome. Um, and they're all Pokemon that can really benefit from the rain. I think this is going to be a rain first team, but the, as it's constructed, I don't think it's super... I, I think it can function outside of rain if the matchup arises. Um... On the physical side, he went and got Mamoswine, one of my most feared physical attackers. It doesn't benefit from the rain, but again, I think that's good that you have... Mamoswine and Overquill are your two biggest physical attackers that you're going to be running week to week, assuming Decidueye to a lesser extent. Um, and none of them need the rain. Overquill doesn't need the rain to be effective. Mamoswine doesn't either. Hisuian Decidueye benefits from it, but doesn't need it. Um... I think that's a good way to build the team. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. And plus, all of these Pokemon deal with... Um, well, I guess soon, soon Decidueye deals with bulky water types. Mamoswine deals with bulky grass types. So does Overquill. And these are the things that are going to shut down Pokemon like, you know... I guess he doesn't have a big, scary, like, water type rain sweeper, which is maybe a knock I would put against this team. But also, Overquill can terrestrialize water... And then it's your water type sweeper, and it can beat grass types. And it can honestly power through a lot of water types too. So I think this team's constructed well. Maybe that's going to be something we're going to have to look out as far as Terra Pokemon go. Overquill is, I believe, at nine points. Um, let's real quick run over and look at. So Overquill. Oh, it's only at eight points. So that's good. Because that means he can afford to run. Um, let's see. Seven, so he can run, afford to run Overquill Fortress. And I guess Overquill in one of these fours, but that's it. Eh, not the best, but also not terrible. Like having a narrow scope of Terra Pokemon, I think he might find that restricting at some points. Maybe we see a uh, change to the structure just in terms of getting those shaken up. Oh, wow. Something I didn't notice on Kyle's team. And also, uh, why, why is Weavile underlined? Obviously, Terra Band. Does it have an additional ban on it that I'm unaware of? That seems weird. Um, okay, I'm going to take a small detour and try to figure that out. Terra Band. Obviously, Weavile. Usually, that's what that would mean. It's underlined. But Weavile obviously can't terrestrialize because it costs too much. Uh, Brett, uh, can you teach me why that's underlined um, when this comes out? That seems weird. Well... 
How much does it cost? It's over here. Yeah, I don't know why that's underlined. That's that's bizarre. Um, back to this. But anyways, Hal actually has a couple, like most of his, not most of. Let's see. Bip, bip, bip. Bip, bop, boop, bip. Those are the Pokemon that are a cost effect that Kyle can terrestrialize. But the only ones that he can actually put terrestrialization markers on is Arbeliva. Oh no, Incineroar can't. What am I doing? Bip, bop, boop. Bippity, bop, boop. Not Inteleon. So Articuno. Arbeliva. That's it? That's it. The, so those those are Kyle's Terramons all season, not changing. Probably just changing types occasionally. That's kind of interesting. Uh, but back to Dakota. Sorry, I got derailed there. I think he's got a, he's got a little bit of a loss of flexibility in terms of what Pokemon can tear. Because I don't think, unless he wants to go Decidueye, Colossal, um, and Meowstic, that's the only way he can get three Pokemon to Terrastalize, I guess. Give enough points to go these three also. Yeah. Um, but I think you're probably going to want Overquill most weeks, just due to the structure of the team. So, maybe that's a problem there, but we have a couple of other things we can talk about on his team. Um, he's got a good host of Hazard Setters and Rapid Spinners and Defoggers, that's great. Seeing, like, three clearing options, I think, is really solid, especially when they're all in different Pokemon. I can't think of a Pokemon that gets both Rapid Spin and Defog. Probably exists out there. Not going to look into it, but that would... Like, I think three Pokemon down in this section is what you need minimum. Um, it does worry me to see so many repeats across what he has, but at the end of the day, he does have five Pokemon that can set Hazard. That's what's important. He's going to have options for Hazard stacking. I think the only thing that maybe worries me is seeing Fortress pop up so many times. Same thing with Colossal. Um, like... Having your flexibility rely on those two Pokemon is a little bit worrisome, but even if you took them out of the equation, like, if you even if you only look at them as rapid spinners, you still have those three down here, right? And maybe you get too bad a four-move four slot syndrome on here. You probably might have to take... I, I think he might end up finding it's harder to use hazards than things, um, just due to the fact that Overkill is going to be important to your offense, right? Um, Fortress can probably come most weeks, especially if there's rain. Um, Colossal isn't really, it could, could make use of itself, <coughs> uh, outside rain. You're not really going to be wanting to run Stealth Rocks on these guys, but you can in a pinch. I think there's just, this seems like a lot of flexibility, and I don't actually know if it is. Um, so something to watch out for there. Uh, great switch initiative options. Um, Dakota's a big Florgis, uh, advocate. Um, I think he's going to like what he gets out of that, obviously. And also good, um... Good priority. Like, obviously, you're not running, you're not going to hit Sucker Punch and Fake Out on these guys, typically. But Ice Shard, Aqua Jet, um, Shadow Sneak, Sucker Punch. Really good options there. Um, I think you got... I'm counting three full dual screen options here. Oh, that's good. Got a Wish Passer. You got Taunt, taunt Knockoff on a couple of Pokemon. You're going to be able to deal with, um, like, any sort of stalling stuff that comes up. Uh, and we haven't even talked about the type. Only one you know total weakness on this team and that's to rock and as we talked about not too big of a problem if you have good hazard clearing so uh this is i think this is kind of in contrast to kyle's issues kyle had a lot of stuff outside of this chart looked good but then this chart looked bad Dakota's chart looks great, and there are a couple of points of concerns outside it. I don't think this, none of these are deal breakers, but I do think they're challenges he might face. Um, it's, I just don't know how people will react to the rain team. It's not like he's hard rain, so, um, which I, isn't a problem. I don't know. It's, there's, I, I definitely, this obviously can work. I'm a little bit concerned I kind of wish he would have went and grabbed, like, I was talking to him, and he's like, do I need another rain sweeper? And I said no, but I think with more reflection, I would have been like, maybe you do want a water type swift swimmer. Because um, now Overquill is going to have to be that. And there's time to address that if he feels he needs to, but I, would, I wouldn't make any changes until I got, like, a feel for the team, probably two weeks, and then realize I really need a rain, like, a water type swift swimmer or not. Because um, there's options for him out there. 
But uh, I think that's all I have to say on this. Interested to see what he's going to do. We haven't seen a rain team in the league in a while. Not like this is a hard rain team, but um, haven't seen one in a while. Just going to take a look at how it's going to go. Next, we've got Jabron and the New England Patriots. Narrowly avoided relegation last season. Uh, so let's see the team he put together this time. Uh, again, really on the slow side. He's got a couple of Pokemon tees in that 110 mark, but like that's the bare minimum you need to have speed on the team. And he also does not have sticky webs. So, uh, but even if he did, like, Iron Moth's going to be boots a lot. Flygon. Oh, never mind. These are sticky webs against him. Um, anyways, uh, so maybe that's a little bit of a problem. A lot of stuff crowded up at 80, then a big drop off to 65. Not a problem after that. Like, I, these gaps don't matter too much. Uh, actually, maybe it would, because you do run some speed on Scizor. That's a 15-point gap, so maybe you know, slight ding for that. I don't know. I don't think it's a big issue. Now, honestly, it's probably okay there because Scizor is only going to be... You're going to be speed creeping stuff at like... Like, no speed stuff at 70, 75 is really all the investment that you're looking for on Scizor, right? Um, so, ooh, this is... I, I, I know I'm supposed to... I typically jump over to this first, but this really caught my eye here. Um, so, only having Defog on Scizor and no Rapid Spinner, but he does have Hatterene to Magic Bounce. So, his Hazard Control is going to be Hazard Prevention. Um, it's something we've seen a little bit in the past, but I don't love it. I don't love it as a strategy. Um, it's, it... Because there's ways around it. Actually, I can't think of any mold breakers that got taken in the league that set hazards. So maybe that's not a problem. But man, does Hatterin have to come? Like Hatterin has to come to every game, um, especially this team with a rocks, a, a you know mathematical rock weakness. Four Pokemon weak to rocks. That's Lapras, Rotom, Articuno, Iron Moth. You don't like you can run boots on all those Pokemon, and that becomes less of a problem. But also, is a very u turny team. You need to be able to control hazards. That's a concern to me. Um, you can definitely play around it, but it's just... It's one thing you don't really want to have on your mind. Um, like, he has options to set up. Like, his Stealth Rocker, especially, like, Swampert is something you can slap Stealth Rocks on every week. You can put some sort of spike on these guys every week. Even these guys force switches... So you're going to be able to get up spikes or toxic spikes. By the way, if you're listening and not watching for some reason, the guys that force switches are um, Ogre Pond Wellspring set spikes and uh, Iron Moth to set toxic spikes potentially. They force switches, so you'll probably find an opportunity to get a pass with those guys in a pinch. But I think his primary hazard setters are going to be Hisui and Quillfish and Swampert. Um, but yeah, the, the clearing is a little bit of a concern, especially when it's only defog. That means you're getting rid of your own hazards as well. Hazard prevention is going to be super important for him. Hattering's going to have to come to a lot of matches. And that's not bad. It's a good Pokemon. Um, it's just, you know, people know how you're going to be dealing with hazards. They can play around that for sure. Um, okay. Let's look at types. A little bit of a flying weakness. Um... The Simeon Ogre Pond, they're going to become, like, yeah, and your big resist is Rotom Fan. Not something I would be really wanting to rely on to take Brave Birds incoming. Um, or Hurricanes, especially if I need to run, like, boots on it every time. Could be a problem. Um, Rock, we talked about it. Um, it actually is a problem for this team just due to the fact that it doesn't have a lot of uh, hazard control. Ghost, we've also talked about it. Less of an issue. Um, but actually, you know what? Let's just do a quick count up on ghosts. Uh, Dragapult. Uh, or Choreo G. Yeah, it could be a problem. Yeah, like... Ghosts here. I don't see any ghosts. I'm not skipping any ghosts, right? No, no ghosts. Um, he, he doesn't have to worry about ghosts on his own team. They probably won't attack him. No ghosts. Uh, big ghost. Uh, also a ghost, but not really a ghost, you know what I mean? Um, no ghosts, and no ghosts. Okay, not too worried about ghosts. We can we can ignore the ghost problem a little. Um, but, yeah. It's also interesting that this team has more water types than the rain team. 
Um, just a little funny thing to note. Not a problem, uh, not an indictment on either team, but uh, just something. So yeah, I'm a little bit worried about the construction of this team. It's like people are going to be throwing hazards at him, and he's got a lot of U-turners, not a lot of ways to control hazards. Um, like This is a very switchy team, and that just means they're going to be like, I don't know, buy stock and, and, and heavy duty boots because the man, this team is going to be buying a lot of pairs. Like, these are all guys you want to be flip-turning, U-turning, bolt-switching with. And he's got a lot of them. But they're going to get... It's going to be a cheese grater effect, right? Um, he's got great priority, too. Like, I can see running quick attack on any of these guys, particularly on Scizor, because I remember just a, just a fun calc. You know, not telling anybody to use this, but I just remember this calc from uh, playing UU back in, like, Gen 6. Uh, plus two, like, Swords Dance, Life Orb, Quick Attack, Scizor, uh, kills Rotom Heat after Stealth Rock damage. Uh, I guess it's an offensive Rotom Heat. Um, and I, actually, maybe it doesn't kill Rotom Heat. And maybe it kills Rotom Heat after two rounds of Stealth Rock damage. It kills Infernape after one round of Stealth Rock damage. Um, these are just some calcs I had to know at the time. Uh, but that was a fun thing. Uh, Ice Shard will come into play. Uh, the Aqua Jet and Bullet Punch will come into play. First Impression, I'd love to see First Impression get whipped out. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, this is... Out of the teams that we've looked at here, this is probably the one I have the most concern for. Um, Type-wise, not too terrible. Speed tier-wise, a little bit of a problem. Um, but I think the Hazard Control... And the U-turn is probably where we're going to see most of the issues. Um, if he doesn't want to invest in, in Jordans for his 18 children. So, so, you know. Yeah. Moving on to our reigning, defending, undisputed champ. Oh, we need to get some stars in this guy's logo. He's got four stars, right? We gotta. I don't know if we got to put... Ooh, it'd be cool to put rings on Excadrill. Like little championship rings. But then that means Zach has to stop playing at six championships unless we want toe rings on excadrill uh not something i was looking for but look at this this absolute dirge of of priority here um i mean the one of them that's there is very good one of them that's there is never going to get used and then there's no other priority i just kind of an interesting thing um okay let's focus up speed tiers uh no huge gaps that's a, that's a gap 106 to 90, that's that's a decent gap. And there's a lot of stuff that occupy that space. Um, so, could be lightly exploitable. Big drop off from 80 down to 45. Um, that means if you have less than... if You uh, you know what, though? Zach plays a little fast and loose with speed tiers, in my opinion. Like, uh, actually, no, does he? No, Brett plays a little fast and loose with speed tiers. I just, I remember, I'm casting my mind back many seasons ago. I can't remember which season it was, but Brett had a Celebi, no, Zach had a Celebi. And Brett had a uh, Landorus Eye, something like that. I, maybe I have these two reversed, but um, I think it was Brett had a Landorus Eye and Zach had a Celebi. And... Brett was just like, oh yeah, I don't need to run max speed on Landers Eye. I'm not if Zach's running a you know timid max speed Celebi, I'm not really scared about that. Um, and then he ended up losing his Landers Eye to a max speed Celebi. That's something if you watched my uh, team building video from season 20, that's something that that I kind of talked about in there is the way I deal with speed tiers. And I think Zach a lot of the time I could be mistaken. I've never been in tune with his team building process. I think Zach just goes max speed on a lot of things all the time. I don't think he really tweaks speed tiers as much, at least not that I've been able to tell. Um, I'd love some insight, even if you don't want to share it with everybody else, Zach. I'm just curious for my own uh, edification. Anyways, uh, getting back to it. Uh, speed tiers aren't too terrible. There's a little bit of a gap here that I think could be concerning if something with 105 wants to come along and just be like, fuck it, I'll just outspeed Moltres. I can run Adamant and outspeed all this stuff and none of this stuff anyways but that is also then zach could go ahead and be like i'm gonna run a modest slash adamant and amorous who's to say um popping over here ice uh like i said i mean that's a lot of ice weaknesses and only two resists 
Um, normally, I would say, oh, there's not a lot of scary Ice-type Pokemon in the League. We looked at that earlier. But, I mean, Terra exists in five Ice Weaknesses with only two Resists. Well, I mean, again, it's Toxpex and Goldengo. They can take hits. And, oh, man, I didn't realize how bulky this team was. We're going we're gonna to break that down a little bit in a minute. Um, but maybe that's a concern. I, I do think that is probably, like... Oh, man, he's got to face Mamoswine at some point this season. Mamoswine, it hits, uh, like, between the, like, the two things that resist ice are weak to ground. Um, Cyclozar, weak to ice. Cincino doesn't resist either. Enamorous, weak to ice. Moltres doesn't resist either. Uh, Slitherwing, you know, Slitherwing, I guess that's the thing you're trying to, that's the thing you're going to be threatening him. You're going to lose a Pokemon to Mamoswine, and then Slitherwing's going to come out, right? Ping Lu, two hit KO'd by an ice move, presumably. Toxapex, Nacklestack, that could be a problem. You know, that's just one Pokemon. But you can get ground and ice coverage on multiple Pokemon, especially with Terra. Um, that's, I think that is a strong enough, like, line of red on this team that is a problem for Zack. Um... Fairy, you know, is a 4 to 1 ratio of weaknesses. I don't think that's too big of an issue. And, oh, something to start... Okay, this is the first time we've seen this interaction. We actually have a net resist on rocks. And it's like, hey, that's great, but also do we really want to give him credit since I've been, being, since I've been hand-waving away rock weaknesses on everybody else? In this case, yeah, because he only has the one spinner. It might be a little hard for him to keep hazards away, but... If he can't keep Hazard's way, most of his Pokemon, I mean, running boots on Moltres, regardless, like a Pokemon, like the other team could have one rock setter, and I'm still probably running boots on Moltres. Um, I don't know, maybe not, but um, this team has a net rock resist um, and only one rapid spinner. I think this, th that's, I'm willing to forgive this more because of this green box here, right? Um, which is the opposite of what I've been doing. I've been able to forgive red boxes because we got three Pokemon here. Right now, I'm forgiving only one Pokemon in these boxes because of this green box here. Um, Stealth Rockers. A little low tier on Stealth Rockers. Tinglu's going to be doing the heavy lifting as far as that goes. Um, but I could definitely see Knackle Stack and even Gabite coming. I, I, I'm fascinated to see what Zach thinks about Gabite. Because how much does Gabite cost? One or two points? Um, da, 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 one point. I know that Zach has been like, oh, the one point tier is garbage. I don't like any of the Pokemon in there. I totally could see Gabite coming. It's his only like fast Earthquaker. Um, it's also his only Dragon type. Or no, I guess Cyclosar is Dragon type. I don't know. I could see like a little little scarf gabite uh, causing like you know causing a little bit of terror for somebody. Um, I like the idea of that. A um, couple of good U-turners, decent but good volt switcher, tidy up. Oh, you know what? Since you know gets tidy up, that's another that's another uh, hazard clear that I had neglected to think about. Um, and uh, interestingly, I'm I'm only thinking this. It doesn't really affect Zach because I'm seeing Goldengo here, but. Like, Tidy Up is, like, the only hazard clearing that Goldengo can't block. Um, I don't remember Mouse Hold or Furret being taken anywhere. So, Zack does have the way, like, he can keep hazards on the field, on his opponent's side of the field, better than anybody. Um, because he's got Goldengo. Uh, yeah. I mean, Zack, I don't think, builds a lot of teams in a super conventional way. Like, just the fact that I'm talking about, like, he only went and got one rapid spinner. That's not something most teams do. Uh, and he got two low-tier rock setters. Like, he he doesn't build teams super conventionally. And also, like, looking at this, there's nothing that I look at that. I'm like, ooh, that's a fucking scary mod. Except maybe an Amorous Eye. It'll dengo to a degree. But he's got so many defensive Pokemon and some support Pokemon. Um, I don't think... Like, I've learned to fear what Zach can do with the team, but I don't fear this team, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, overall, nothing nothing really wrong with this team. 
nothing really exciting about this team. Like, it's, yeah, it's hard to break down. Maybe that ice is a problem. But if anybody's going to play around it, it's going to be Zach. Moving on, newcomer to the north. We've got the Santa Fe Suicune. Okay, uh, so, again, a little slow. Topping out at 110 with this team. Um, I mean, slow top to bottom now that I'm looking at it. Like, usually I stop paying attention to speed tiers around the 70s, but that's like the middle of the team here. Um, so average speed of 73. I haven't been paying super close attention to the averages, but I do remember that uh, Blackburn Pokemon Club had a 76, and I said that was kind of a slow team. So let's take a look. 91, pretty fast. 94, pretty fast. 76, pretty slow. 80, 80. 73 is quite slow. Um... And maybe Sableye gets Trick Room. Maybe Metagross gets Trick Room. I think Chandelure gets Trick Room. But even if that's even if I'm correct on all those, I don't think this is a very attractive team for Trick Room. Like, I, I, you don't have any Trick Room sweepers here, so it's not a Trick Room team. You don't have a Sticky Weber. I think this team's this seems very slow. Um, that's I think that is biggest glaring concern that I have right um very slow team I mean Raging Bolt Chandelure very offensive Metagross Ogre Pond uh and Cornerstone very offensive um don't even have a lot of speed set up I think that's going to be a that could be a problem with this team just kind of slow um and not a lot of support to fix that um but we got a Rabbit Spinner and Defogger, and they're ones that you're going to bring a lot, so I think that's fine. Um, you have Stealth Rockers that you like. And did Cornerstone doesn't get spikes? I mean, I feel like it should because it's a rock type, but also that means the other one would have to get Stealth Rocks, so I guess that makes sense. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to be a little down on this team. Just due to the fact, like, I, I see, you see a lot of support in, with Vespaquin, Sableye, um, Fezendipity feels kind of supporty to me. Just those attack stats don't really do a lot for me. Um, I see three support mons, and I see two mons that are more de defensive than offensive. Uh, th yeah, three. Um, and then I see Metagross, which is a very scary attacker that needs support. Uh, Raging Bolt, uh, I used it badly, but doesn't need too much support. Chandelure, I love, but it you got to find the right set for it. Like, Specs, Scarf, and then, like, Boots. Boots, three attacks plus Calm Mind, I think you can go with. Um, sub lefties, if the if the matchup's right. You need it, but you need to find the right set for it. If you don't get the right set for it, Chandelure's complete. Like, it being also being your third fastest Pokemon is a big concern. And the fact that... Hasn't dipped these 99 speed. What a weird number. Yeah, that's that's the biggest concern is these speed tiers. The fact that your three fastest things are like your third fastest Pokemon is 80 speed. That's a problem. Good U turning and volt switching. Um and flip turning and or sorry. Like that's good. I like that. But um overall, I do think this team. I mean, the, sp the speed really concerns me. And I do think just a lot of utility mons, and I'm not seeing stuff that really... I feel like you had a lot of boxes checked in terms... I, I, I remember talking to him about this team, and I think we talked about Raging Bolt and Corviknight. I love those those guys together. Um, and then I think Blastoise to kind of be able to take some, some other heat off of him. Pheasantipity being around. Like, I don't dislike any of these Pokemon separately, but there's some issues I have with these Pokemon together. Um, okay, let's let's move on to types. Ice, uh, it's a four and three. I, I'm not too concerned about if you have three resists, right? Uh, not too big of a problem, especially when we got weaknesses from uh, like Vespaquin, which isn't going to be coming a ton. Um, I'm not, I don't know, this isn't too concerning to me. Uh, the ground type, ooh, that's concerning me. Having no resists, and again, Vespaquin being... So, Corviknight needs to switch in on every ground type in the entire world, because you have uh, Metagross, Raging Bolt, Chandelure, Pheasantipity, which I would imagine 
the majority of those Pokemon are going to have like a 85% bring rate uh, combined, if not higher. Um, Corviknight's going to be 100, but the, you're going to be bringing one of these Pokemon. You're going to be bringing one of these Pokemon 100% of the time. You're probably going to be bringing three of these Pokemon 90% of the time, if not higher. Um, I, that That's a problem for me. Um, probably going to be... You know what? The other uh, Zach's team, or no, hold on, was it Jabron's team? You need to invest in heavy duty boots. Invest in air balloons, okay? Air balloons, shuckaberries, um, gonna be a big thing for this team. Um, light screen, you know, that's also probably gonna be coming up a lot. That's gonna be stabilize, uh, stabilize bread and butter with this team. I think that is probably, I would say, use Sableye to make opportunities to set up. That might be where he has to go with his team. Um, Rock's weakness, we got a green square here, which forgives only having two Pokemon, so we like that. Ghost, um, not a huge issue. I think, think uh, salvageable. Uh, although a lot of ghosts do, I feel like a lot of ghosts have fairy coverage, but maybe I'm just thinking of there's a couple that have Dazzling Gleam. Um, I don't know, could it be something to watch out for. Uh, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Only having two weaknesses and the one resist, probably okay. Um, priority, nothing super strong. Like, Jet will come into handy once in a while. Bullet Punch, obviously not too bad. Probably not using Quick Attack a bunch. You're going to be using Pranks for priority moves here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Couldn't get to the pause in time. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This team, I have... This team is a team I think is going to struggle. Um, maybe I'm just not seeing the forest through the trees here. But it just seems like there's not a lot of synergy going on. Um, we'll have to, But we'll have to wait and see. We can move on to the Seattle Marines. Seattle Marines had a down season last year. Only making it to the semifinals. How, how disappointing. Um... Obviously, being sarcastic, uh, Brett has look at this. He's got him hidden in there, but he's got four starts. He's got four championships. He's not, he's not hurting too bad for for accolades, and he had a good season. Um, just stumbled at the uh, at the very end of it, and to say stumbled is a harsh thing when you make it to the semifinals, right? Like that's that's a pretty good performance. Anyways, uh, speed tears. We got who's an electrode coming in fast. Um, Kind of like outside the bounds of it, but he does have an elite level speed, which is going to cause issues for people, right? Then you have Latios at 110. Um, obviously a big gap there, slightly exploitable, but the things that can exploit it have to be 125 to 130 and up in speed range. Uh, not a ton of Pokemon in that space that are going to be able to do that, right? So um, not too much of a concern in my mind. Uh, then you got Cryagonal. Let's see, any other gaps here? Uh, nothing major. I mean, that's the only 15-point jump I'm seeing that I, in a range I'm worried about. Actually, only 15-point jump, period, is between here and here. So, um, not not too much to worry about at all. Wow, this is running long. This is running much longer than the South. Because um, we still have another team to go after this. In the South, I was done at this point. Okay. Let's let's buckle down here. Um, so yeah, speed not worried about rock. Okay, we got a red box here, but we got three Pokemon here, so it's forgiven, right? Ghost, same exact split as last time, so not too worried about anything in this in this bar here. So we like that. Um, stealth rocks, a lot of stealth rock options. That's awesome. No spike options, not a big deal. I think spike stacking is good, but. I don't think it is critical. Got a Toxic Spiker and a Grounded Poison type. Awesome. Um, already talked about these these three fellas here. You turn Volt Switch. A little light compared to some other teams, but I think you've got enough to be effective if you need to be. Um, I know I'm burning through this, but you've heard a lot of my thoughts already on these, and Brett, I think, builds his teams in a pretty conventional way. Uh, you have two Pokemon that are both decent with Sucker Punch. You have uh, these Pokemon really aren't going to use Quick Attack too often. Mach Punch, yes. Ice Shard, very occasionally. Bullet Punch, yes. Aqua Jet, never. 
fake out occasionally, like tech, techno top. Um, you, you can run, you could probably run fake out, bullet punch, mock punch, sucker punch on a min speed, um, like AV hit on top with technician and just really annoy people. Um, I mean, you'd probably want rapid spin on there. Um, but like technician everything plus priority, you know, pretty good uh, thing to have in hit on top. Um, Got two wishers and a regenerator. Oh, I didn't. Oh man, there was something I said I was going to talk about here. Uh, Cyclozar regenerator, uh, Toxpex regenerator, and also you have all this flippy shit going on. Um, we've seen dual regenerators do really well in the past. Um, I think Cyclozar is going to have a lot of longevity here. That's basically what I wanted to say, but forgot about it. Um, and we actually only have one regenerator on Brett's team. Pretty interesting. Alamola has kind of gone under the radar as a regenerator for a long time, I think because of its, um, I don't want to say pitiful, but dreadful attacking stats. Um, and so that's kind of put off some people to it, but Wish plus regenerator, especially with a huge HP stat on Alamolola, um, really increase the longevity of everything around it. Um, this is going to be a hard team to kill. Like, I haven't... An another thing I haven't been paying too much attention to is, like, average defensive stats. But I feel like 78 and 88 are pretty solid. Um, nothing on here with the except... Like, Cryagonal's super frail on the defensive side, but great spinef. Um, assuming Electro, it doesn't really matter that it's frail, because if it's got a bad matchup, it'll just won't switch out. Um, Latios, not frail by any means, and very offensive. Um... Assuming Typhlosion, uh, like, it's, it's typing's not bad, and it's defenses aren't bad. Nothing on here is frail. You'd never describe anything on here as frail. And having two really good wish passers, plus one of those mods being a generator, you have intimid two intimidators. This team's going to live for a long time. Um, and that's the scary thing about Brett, is if you give him time, he will beat you. Um that's the way this guy plays um you, you and he can create so much time you're gonna make a mistake before he does um and the way this team is set up is going to be designed to extend battles and give him time to set up his win conditions um good looking team by brett um now going on to our runner-up from last season okay let's let's speed through here okay speed we're you know we've got a speed gap right away 120 to 108 um Again, I guess that's exactly 15 points. The things that are the things that are going to be able to take advantage of that, pretty slim. Uh, like the the things that are within the speed to be able to take advantage of that, and the things that he is going to face. Those two circles create a very small sliver of Venn diagram. So something to watch out for, but you know, not a not a not the end of the world. Um, other than that, all the speed tiers look really solid. Big drop off from Dragonite down to Donphan. Again, we've talked about why that's not too big of an issue. Um, seeing the return of Macargo, uh, obviously thought it was a huge steal at two points. Um, at three points, he would have turned his nose up at it, but at two points, uh, amazing value. Uh, and then, okay, so we've got some, we've got some red squares to talk about here. Ground, uh... We got one resistant Appleton, one in Dragonite, one in Miascarada. I Appleton's great. I'm a big Appleton guy. Um But I do think that having to bring Appleton most times to eat up your ground moves could be a par could could not be fun. Oh boy. Did I Okay, so skip that. Okay, thank you guys. Um, I think that could be a problem, because uh, he also does have quite a few ground weaknesses on here that people are going to be targeting, uh, so maybe he can make up the, the difference there with Terra Captains, but we'll see. Flying. Um, so what do we got here as far as flying goes? Again, Appleton, Quack, Mascarada, and Iron Crown, Macargo's Resist. Macargo's not coming a lot. Iron Crown, you don't want taking a ton of hits. This could be a problem, too. Grid's Ground Flying Combo. Those are two pretty common offensive types. Uh, definitely something to look out for. Got a red square here, so now we go check over here. Huh? Not good, not great, right? Um, 
so you know something to look out for but we've we've extensively talked about how to evaluate that stealth rockers um yes mccargo but don fan really uh your spikers you could run on any of these guys but if you're running spikes or toxic spikes you're probably going quillfish just due to uh Miascarada's time being better spent not setting up hazards uh sticky webs this is the I think the first or second team we i think somebody had cricketune um earlier but uh this is otherwise the only team actually was it maryland had cricketune yeah but their speed tiers like it's just something in their arsenal wasn't anything to really uh that i think the team is built around by any means um this team is a little bit middling in speed so i think sticky webs could actually have a decent impact here um so uh, nice to see galvantula here uh but and, you know has rapid spin so you're not going to see defogging you're going to see him being pretty conservative around when he gets up hazards because he isn't going to i guess less conservative because if he has the defog that's different because i remember there was a joke a long time ago where it's just like oh man good hazard setter oh hold on, i'm getting a call ignoring that though for the time being good hazard setter is empoleon but uh, the problem with Empoleon is if you also want to clear hazards, then you have to defog your own hazards away. Obviously, you just do it in a different order, or you wait for the right time after their hazard setter is gone. Less of a problem here, because you can just clear your own hazards as other people's hazards go up around you. You can just clear them away, and then get up your own hazards, and you stay there. Um, one, two... Oh, we talked about Magmortar in the south uh, in terms of priority. Ice Charters, Jetters, E-Speed, yeah. Decent options for priority. Um, I like what he's put together there. Um, he actually does have two Pokemon that could go dual screens if he wanted to, although I'd be surprised if they did. Um, decent switch initiative. Uh, I like what he's got going on there. And Quackaval, I think, is a super underrated like mid to late game sweeper. I think Quackaval is awesome. Iron Crown, we saw do very well. Comfy. It's, it's going to have a week where it gets five KOs. Maybe it's harder to do in the north, but we'll see. Masquerada has been a lead leaguer, ugh, league leader in KOs basically every season since it's been introduced. Magmortar, we saw, I was really impressed with what it did last season. Or was it two seasons ago? I can't remember. Like, when you put a Terra Fire on this Pokemon, it's very scary. Uh, Dragonite, something we haven't seen in a while, but... You know, definitely not something to be slept on with 134 attack and Dragon Dance and E-Speed. Uh, Don fan. Personally, for me, kind of becoming a favorite on par with Lantern. It's just kind of a plug and play mon that has like so many uses. Um, it's great to be around. Uh, and then I like Appleton. Quillfish is good. Yeah, overall, really solid team. Uh, excited to see what Darren can do. Um, coming off such a great season last year, I think he's kind of established himself as an elite player in the league. Um, like winning the South two seasons ago to making the playoffs uh, the season after in the North and then going to the like going to the finals, he's on a trajectory to be able to make uh, a championship run this season. Um, and this team, I think, is totally equipped to do it. I don't see really any weak links on this team. Any weaknesses, like this is maybe an exploitable problem, but Darren, like I said, elite level player, totally think he can deal with it. Okay, let's run over to the schedule. Why is the schedule not showing? I know I, didn't I, I have this fixed? Yeah, yeah, there's a schedule, okay. Not bad, guys. Um, yeah, so, got yeah, Kyle versus Gibran opening it up. Um, I think, you know, just, I, I had some issues with uh, Gibran's team, less so with Kyle. Um, so, interesting to see what Kyle can do there. Uh, Michael's team, you know, uh, admittedly someday i had some harsh things to say for their team going up against one of i think the more well put together teams in the league definitely could be a problem for michael drew versus zach immediate rematch from the finals last season that's very exciting and then dakota versus darren uh two former champions going out isn't that fun um and also two rebranded teams uh Hopefully we can slow down on the rebranding, guys. I know it's fun to get new colors and logos, but like you can see, like Brett doesn't make a ton of mistakes, but this is just these are things that slip through the cracks. Um, just that's that's the the strain it puts on this man. Give him a break. Um, but I think that's all we got to talk about right now. Um, 
I'm recording this on Saturday morning. I'm going to uh, stop recording, start uploading to YouTube, and while those are uploading, I'm going to be putting in Terra Captains. So, um, don't really have any analysis to do on the Terra Captains right now. But uh, thank you all for listening. Looking forward to a great season. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.